At the beginning of this semester, we looked at simple machines. If we look in the real world, we see examples of these mechanisms everywhere. But if we look at construction, for instance, we see that there are different kinds of mechanisms that are used than what we've looked at before. We've talked about electricity already, but there's another mechanism that we haven't discussed yet. Fluid power. Fluid power is the use of a fluid to move power, or work, from one place to another. Using some tricky science, we can manipulate fluids to make doing a job easier. When I say fluids, I really don't just mean water. When we say fluids, we're talking about liquids or gases. So there are two categories of fluid power, hydraulics and pneumatics. Pneumatic systems use pressurized gas to move energy from one place to another. We see examples of pneumatic systems all over the place. If you have a storm door on your house, there's probably a gas piston that allows that door to close slowly. Pneumatic systems have their advantages and disadvantages. Pneumatic systems tend to act quickly with a force, and they're not very messy. There's no liquid to get anywhere. But because we're dealing with a gas, the output power that they provide isn't very high, and they aren't able to be kept at very high pressure. Pneumatic systems also require lubrication to work functionally, so maintenance is an issue. So let's talk about some math that helps us to understand how this works. Fluid systems follow the same rules that all of the mechanisms we've studied so far use, so we can use those equations again. We use an equation called Pascal's Law to help us relate force to pressure. Pascal's Law says that pressure is equal to force over area. Pressure is the amount of force per unit area, or the concentration or intensity of a force, given the amount of area that it's over. In America, we measure pressure using the units PSI, or pounds per square inch. We can measure pressure in three different ways. Atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure, or absolute pressure. Gauge pressure is the pressure that we read on a pressure gauge. It tells us exactly what pressure is being measured in a system. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure that's being put on us by the air around us. At sea level, we all experience an atmospheric pressure of 14.7 psi. Absolute pressure is gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. Inside of a system, atmospheric pressure isn't taken into consideration by the sensor or the gauge. So when we want to determine the actual pressure that something is experiencing, we have to add in the atmospheric pressure. For our calculations, it's really important that we always convert gauge pressures to absolute pressures. Speaking of annoying conversions, we have a similar system for temperature. In this class, we've talked about Fahrenheit, Celsius, and Kelvin. But when we talk about fluid systems, we need to talk about another one. In scientific temperature measurements, they use Kelvin as the unit of absolute temperature. But when we talk about fluid systems, we use a special unit called Rankine. Rankine is absolute temperature measured in the Fahrenheit system. To convert to Rankine, you just add 460 degrees to your Fahrenheit measurement. When we talk specifically about gases, there are three relationships that we use to help describe our systems. And depending on the system that we're talking about, we might use only one of those equations. Boyle's Law compares pressure to volume and assumes that temperature remains constant. Charles's Law compares volume to temperature but assumes that the pressure remains constant. And Guy-Lussac's Law compares pressure to temperature but assumes that the volume is held constant. So depending on the factors that we have in our certain situation, we might end up using one of those equations to compare our information and not the other two. So as you can see, it's really important when we use fluid dynamics that we pay attention to the specific details that we have in our problem. But most of all, it's really important that we convert everything to its absolute value, whether it be temperature or pressure, or both. So let's talk about the liquid systems, hydraulics. Hydraulics use liquids to move power. Heavy equipment tends to use hydraulics. Hydraulic systems tend to be smoother. They provide for a more precise movement or precise operation. They tend to also be able to produce more power output. Fluid systems can also be held at higher pressures, which is advantageous if you're doing a lot of work. That being said, hydraulic systems can be messy. Because you're dealing with liquids, if there's some sort of failure, it's a lot of mess to clean up. 
So we don't use the gas laws to talk about hydraulic systems, but we still can use Pascal's law for pressure to describe what's happening in hydraulic pipes. We also use another equation called flow rate, Q equals V times A. Q is measured in gallons per minute. Flow rate is the measure of how much liquid passes through a particular area in a certain amount of time. V is the velocity of the water, so it's actually how fast the water is moving. And A is the area of the pipe. So the bigger that the pipe is, the more water is able to move through it, and the faster the water is flowing, the more is going to pass through that area over time. But because we're talking about liquids, we need some other equation to help us describe the differences between liquids. Water doesn't have the same qualities as many other liquids. For instance, water and maple syrup are both liquids, but they are both very different and they flow differently. So we have this term that helps us to describe the differences between different types of liquids, and it's called viscosity. Viscosity is the thickness of a liquid. The more thick it is, the more viscous it is. When we talk about lubrication in pneumatic or hydraulic systems, we tend to want a really viscous liquid because a really viscous liquid is going to protect the mechanical pieces in that machine and keep everything nice and flowing. So there's a lot of information in today's video, but with these mechanics and the things that we've talked about in the past, we now have the knowledge to create more complex systems that are able to do things more efficiently. We can build machines that make things a lot easier. For instance, the piston that's on your storm door, or a bulldozer, or an excavator. All of these things use fluid power. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video with us. We hope you learned something. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. For more awesome engineering videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.